all of your questions answered throughout the tour, but just be sure to listen closely. Um, Stacy will do an excellent job getting all of those answered. All right, we just started our live stream onto Facebook. So thank you for those of you who are tuning on on Facebook. We're just gonna give it a minute or two to make sure everybody can get comfortable and get settled in for our virtual farm tour experience. If you are tuning in via Zoom, if you see somebody ask a really good question that you like and you wanna see answered, be sure to like that question and it will push it to the top of the Q&A box and then I'll be able to see it and make sure it gets answered. So that's another tip for everyone tuning in today. I'm gonna get started here in another minute. Um, for those of you tuning in on Facebook, be sure to drop your questions in the comments we will be sure to answer those and get you answers throughout the tour as i stated before if you're tuning in via zoom make sure you drop your questions in the q a box any questions that you really enjoy from other classrooms be sure to like those and those will get ranked towards the top and we can make sure we get those answered today everyone's audio and video is muted for this tour um, so no need to worry about that All right, we are just two minutes past one o'clock. We are gonna get started with our virtual farm tour here today. So I wanna thank everyone so much for tuning in to American Dairy Association Northeast virtual farm tour of Talview Dairy in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. We are so excited to bring you to the farm today. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna give you a bird's eye view of the farm. So I'm gonna show you a quick drone video. So this is Talview Dairy. This is the farm we're going to be touring today. We're going to get to go inside those cow barns and see how the cows are cared for and how comfortable and content they are and all the amazing work that goes into making your wholesome beverage milk. All right, so before we get started, if you're tuning in on Facebook, be sure to drop your questions in the comments below. And if you're tuning in on Zoom, make sure you drop your questions in the Q&A box. Without further wait, I'm gonna pass it off to Stacy, who is our tour host today. Hello everyone, it's so great to have all of you here at Talview Dairy. Thank you, Emma, for introducing our farm. Like she said, we are located in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. To give some of you who may be further away an idea of where that's located, if you think of Hershey's Chocolate, we are about 15 minutes away from Hershey, Pennsylvania. So welcome, I'm so glad you decided to join us today. Our tour today starts with our calves, my favorite, because number one, they're adorable, they are so cute. But number two, this is a future herd for our dairy. These will be the little ones that grow up to be the new milkers on our farm. So as you can see, we have some 
This is a red and white Holstein, and we also have black and white Holstein. So on our farm, we have Holstein cows. So these girls are known as heifers. And when they are first born, they, of course, need some good nutrition. Just like you did when you were a baby, you needed some good nutrition in order to grow and to be strong and healthy. So to first start with our babies, we give them a bottle like this. This is much bigger than a bottle that you might be used to. The very first milk that we give to our new calves is called colostrum. And what colostrum is, it is the first milk that the mother gives. It is rich in nutrients and antibodies for the new babies. So let me just show you, I have just a little water in here, a little sneak. So this girl was very friendly. I don't want to tease her. Let's see if she's going to come out and just show us. Oh, she might be shy with the camera. So they get attached there to the nipple. And she is enjoying some of this. Later on today, she will get milk from this bottle. But the one thing about this, just like little babies, they love to put things in their mouth. They have that sucking reflex. And many times when I have friends actually here on the farm, if you were here, I would have you take your hand and just put your hand in their mouth. And their tongues, they're kind of slimy, they're wet, they're actually a little rough, kind of like sandpaper, but it doesn't hurt at all. The one thing about cows, they do not have teeth on the top of their mouth. They only have teeth on the bottom. So let me just even see if we can see that. So right there, oops, right there is the only place that she has teeth. So she can't clamp down on me and hurt me. So the first thing we start with is, of course, milk. I'll just let that there for now. Milk in a bottle. We then train them to drink from a bucket. And in order to get the milk out to their bucket, we use this piece of equipment that is over here. It's called our milk taxi. And what this does, we fill it with milk from our cows. We actually have a pen of cows that they might have some sore feet or they might be a little older. So they're in a special pen that we fill this with their milk. So as you can see, it's at a nice temperature. This is then used to fill the buckets with milk for the calves that have learned to drink. As you see, she is still wanting to suck on me. So they love to suck, they love to lick. So milk is one of the first things that they start with. And then as they get older, we also introduce them to grain. This is the grain pellets. It's filled with a lot of protein to give them energy and good nutrition to start their journey. And along with milk grain, of course they need water as well. So their buckets are always filled with water as well. The one other thing I want you to notice about our calves, they have a special place called a hutch where they can go lay down and rest where they can be protected from the weather and the elements outside. And actually, I have a little handful here that you can see. We fill their hutch, this yellow stuff. Many people confuse it and they think it's hay. It's actually straw. This is straw and there's little wood shavings in there that also help to keep it dry and comfortable. So it's kind of like their little mattress in there in the hutch. So many times you see them resting in their hutch laying down and especially now today is kind of a chilly day in Pennsylvania they many times go in there to get warm but the one thing too they like cooler weather they have great hair to keep them nice and warm as well so like I said this is one of my favorite areas on the farm because not only are they adorable but they are the future of our herd that one day these little girls will grow up to be milking cows. Awesome. We did have a question come in, Stacey. How, okay. much does a, how much does a calf weigh when it's born? Oh, that is a really good question. And many times I like to have many of you think about how many of you know how much you weighed when you were born? I am a mom of three kiddos. And on average, my kids weighed about seven to eight pounds. 
So think about that. Seven to eight pounds for a baby human. These girls, they weigh about 80 to 100 pounds when they are first born. So maybe some of you, depending on your age, some of you might be weighing around 80 to 100 pounds. So a calf is quite large when they're big. The other thing when we think about their weight too, Emma, is when we were born, we had to be held by our moms or people that loved us. And then we started to crawl. And only later in our life did we start to walk. My children, for example, probably started walking around one year old. These baby calves, they're able to stand up on their wobbly little legs in the first hour of its life. Awesome. I think you're going to love this question, Stacey. Yes. How do you use math in dairy farming? How do we use math? Oh, I love that question because math is one of my favorite subjects. Math is something we use every single day because, number one, we need to use math to make sure they are getting the right amounts of feed, that they don't overeat or they don't undereat. So that's one way that we use math. We need to use math in knowing, um, especially as they get older, how much feed when we go in the freestyle barn, the rations that they need. So the people that mix our feed, they need to know how to remember math to put the right amount of ingredients into the ration. So we use math every single day. And of course, we want to know how much our cows give milk. So that's another number that we definitely like to see as farmers, to see how much our cows are producing. So math is everywhere, every day. Awesome, so we're getting quite a few questions I've seen in the chat about what's in their ears, what is that for, and do you name your cows? Another good question. These are what we call their ear tabs. So it's kind of like an earring. It, doesn't hurt them when they get them in, but throughout their lifetime on the farm, they are identified. So we can know and keep track of when they were born, who their mother and father are, when they got their vaccinations, if they were ever sick. So this is just their identification for us to keep track of them as they move and get older through um, their lifetime. And I'm trying to think the other thing that you asked about the numbers, um, it escaped my brain yes. today. What, what are the numbers for and do you name oh, them? Oh, do we name them? Thank you. We do name a few of our animals. For the most part, our animals are identified by numbers. However, my kiddos are involved in 4-H and they have animals that they take to our county fair and they show animals. So our show animals are the ones that have a specific name. Some of the names that we have on our farm are Pepperoni, Pink, Beauty, Belle, and I'm trying to think of another one. We have Eyes, Inez, that's another one. So we do have a few animals that have a very specific name. Awesome. Well, I see a lot more questions coming in about adult cows, what they okay. eat, how often they rest. So Stacy's actually going to head over to where they house the full grown cows. And while she does that, I'm going to ask her a few questions on her way. So we've gotten a couple questions. How many cows do you have on the farm? And what's the total size of the whole farm? Okay. We milk approximately 250 cows. And on the farm with our calves and then our heifers as they get bigger, we have about 500 head of cattle on our farm. Awesome. We've also gotten a couple questions about the colors. What are the colors on the cows mean? And are there different colors? Okay. That's another great question. Well, like I said in the beginning, we have Holstein cows at our farm. So they are either black and white, or we also have red and white Holsteins. However, there are seven different breeds. If you kind of think about dogs, that there's a lot of different dogs, we have a chocolate lab. We have friends that have Bernese mountain dogs or boxers. There's all different breeds of dogs 
that is very similar to cows. There are seven breeds. So we have Holsteins here. Awesome. Well, like I said, we're getting a ton of questions on where do the cows live? What do the cows eat? So I'm going to let you take it away and explain some of that. So listen close because a lot of your questions are going to get answered. Okay, great. Well, the one place that we are now, this is what we call the free stall barn. And what this is, you can kind of see over on this side right now, this side of the barn is empty. You can visibly see the different stalls that the cows are able to go and lie down in. Right now, this is group one who just got um, taken over to the milking parlor where we, we will go to next. But if you look on this, each stall, there is a mattress. That mattress is filled with a rubber foam. And then we have shavings, wood shavings that are on that to keep it dry and comfortable. So they enjoy lying down in their stalls. I want you to also notice, we know, many of you probably know the book, Everyone Poops. Well, if we look, the manure that comes from the cows, there are slats, those little cracks in the barn. That is where a lot of that manure goes. So right now, myself and the person behind the camera, we're actually standing on top of a big manure pit where all that manure and poop that goes. But one thing that's really important in our freestyle barn, not only are they able to lie down where they went to they're able to walk around there's a lot of the areas that they can walk around but cows are really big animals so they love to eat they need to eat a lot of different feed the first thing i want you to look at these are different ingredients that we use in our total mixed rations that's another way to say tmr this first ingredient is a corn silage. So many times in the summer and this fall, this was harvested, the long corn stalks, all of it was chopped up. So this is corn silage. This ingredient is rye. This is a grassy um, part of the ingredient, rye. This is kind of like, kind of feels like sand. And it is ground up corn. And this last ingredient is a special mineral that is loaded with a lot of protein that gives the cows energy to produce delicious, nutritious, wholesome milk for us. And this has soybean meal in it. So what we do, kind of like if you have a plate at dinner, say you have peas and you have roast beef and you have mashed potatoes, we would mix all of that together and this all gets combined to make a TMR. So if we just kind of look behind here, this big pile of feed is everything together. Everything has been mixed together. So when they take a bite, it's not like they can push the peas out of the way. They have to eat their vegetables too. So all of it is mixed together and they're able to enjoy it. This big pile of feed as well, this represents about how much a cow will eat in one day. This is about 100 pounds of TMR. We actually work with a special person on our farm it's a nutritionist and he kind of tells us what ingredients, the amounts that we need to put in here for exactly what our cows need. Just like you and I need a drink to wash down our meals, we need water. And hopefully we drink milk too, but cows especially need water. If you look at this big tub, this container is 33 gallons. A cow in one day drinks 30 to 50 gallons of water. So if we were to fill this entire tub once and maybe another half, that is the amount that they drink. So food and water are really important. It is constantly out in front of them that they can be eating, that they can be content and many times when they're not eating and they're relaxing they are doing something called they're chewing their cud 
And I want to compare that to some of us like to chew bubble gum. It's kind of like they have something in their mouth that they're able to continue to chew. They use something called rumination, which is the cud chewing. So they do that when they are very relaxed and content. The one other thing I want to share about our freestyle barn is it's really important that it's a nice temperature in here. If you look on a hot day, we have fans that go off. When it's about 65 degrees in here, the fans will automatically turn on. When it's really warm, we have a sprinkler system that sprinkles water on them. Like many of us in warm, hot days, we love to jump in the pool or we love to run through the sprinkler. Our cows like to get cooled off too. And then we have, if you look at the one side of the freestyle barn, we have curtains. They go up and down to also help keep the temperature very nice in here. So I want to tell you, today is a perfect day for the cows. They love when it's 40 degree weather. So they are really enjoying this. The one other feature that we have on our farm to keep them happy and healthy, if you look over here, there's a yellow brush. And right now someone was over there. Oh, it's not activated right now. It's like they can kind of go up to get a little spa treatment. The brush moves and it kind of massages them. And actually they shed a lot of their hair too. So kind of like they have the chance to get their backs itched, which is very nice for them. Wow, that is so much good information. I hope everyone was listening close because I heard a lot of questions of yours be answered. We did have a question, how big um, or how much do a full grown cow weigh? Okay, well, dep it depends on the breed of cows. So especially one breed that we do not have on our farm, they are Jersey cows. They are very small and petite, so they do not weigh as much. But since we have Holsteins on our farm, they weigh, and here's another math number for you. Think about how you could write this. The number is 1,500 pounds. So 1,500 pounds is the average weight of a nice sized dairy Holstein cow. Wow, that is so big. Well, we're getting a lot of questions about the milking process, which I know we are gonna cover in our next stop. So if, if you're all set in the cow barn, Stacey, we can head over to the parlor and I'll ask you some questions on the way. Okay, sounds great. Awesome. So I think this question is a good one to ask before the milking process. We're getting some questions on what age do they start producing milk and what time of year do they calve or have, have babies? Oh, that's a really good question. Well, like we were over at the calf hutches. Those were the new babies and they're over there for about two months. And when an animal is about two years old, that is when they will have their first calf. And I really like that question because in order to produce milk, an animal needs to have a baby. It's like many other mammals you might know, like think about it and you can share some in your class, like a dog. They need to have a litter of puppies before they can produce milk. And there are many other mammals that also need babies in order to produce milk. So around two years old is when they will start producing milk. Awesome. So we are now in the milking parlor and I know so many of you have questions on how cows are milked. So Stacy's going to show us firsthand how that's done. Okay. Well, this is another great place because this is where the cows give us milk. The drink that I personally love. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put a pair of gloves on because it is so important to keep things clean and safe. So I don't wanna give my germs from my hands to the cows. So I'm gonna kind of take you through here and we have a friend in here today, CJ is milking with us today. We milk three times a day at Talview Dairy. And the first thing that we do, I need to scoot down here for one moment 
is we have this little foamer and this goes on all of their teeth. It is a solution made with iodine. So you can kind of think of it as hand sanitizer that you want to get it clean. So we would go through, I'll just do two here. We get it on each teat. Cows have four teats. Once we have that iodine on there, it stays on for about 10 to 15 seconds. And then we go through with a clean cloth. So we do a lot of laundry on the farm here. So I'm just gonna clean the four teats. And the other thing that we do as well is we do something, it's called stripping the cows. So what I would do, watch real carefully, you're gonna see a squirt of milk come out. I go to the top and I squeeze down. Let me try it again that you can see it. And the reason we strip the cows is to make sure the milk looks healthy, it looks white, it looks pure. It looks like something that I want to drink and for you to be able to drink. So once I clean their teats and I strip at it, I then am ready to hang the milker. So I push this button. And right now, if you were to put your finger in the milker, it pulses. It doesn't hurt them. It just has a light little pulsation that is going to go on each teat. And there it goes. If you look, you can now see the milk is coming through. And the one other thing I didn't talk about earlier, each cow in our milking herd has this little band on their ankle. And what that band is, it's kind of like a little Fitbit. So it tells us the activity, how much they're lying down and resting, how much they're moving around. And then in the parlor, they're numbered. Do you remember those little ear tags we saw? That number is going to show up so we know who this is. And this number is changing. It's showing us how much milk she is giving. This will sense how much milk is coming through. This weighs it. And then this machine will be able to tell when the cow isn't giving as much milk. And the milker will come off automatically. So as you can see, this side, they've already come off. So here we have some weights of how much these cows have given. And when we're finished milking, we go through and we dip them again with another iodine solution on all four teats to make sure when they go back out to their living space, they're protected and safe that they won't collect any germs while they go back out with their friends. So I'm just gonna finish dipping and I'll show you how the cows are then released. So Emma, if you have any questions while I dip. Yes, absolutely. We did get a question on why did you choose Halstein cows? Oh, that is a good question. Number one, my husband, he likes Holsteins because they're known to be good producers of milk. They are also, if you notice, they're not, um, I would say they're, they're like a friendly breed. I know some other breeds, not to bust on other breeds, but jerseys are known to be a little kicky and they might move around a little bit more. Um, so we like the personalities of the Holsteins and they're good milk producers. I know the jerseys can be a little mischievous too they sometimes. Can. <laughs> they sure can. Okay, so I am ready to release these cows. All of them have been dipped. And now 
like I said, I live really close to Hershey. And if some of you are aware, Hershey Park Amusement Park is really close. This kind of reminds me of a Hershey Park ride. I'm gonna push this button and the front gate is going to open where all the cows are gonna be able to release and go out. So there they go. How cool is that? And, and we're getting some questions, you know, do they like being milked and, and they seem so calm? Is, is this a normal habit and routine for them? They are very calm. This is part of their daily routine. Like I said, they are milked three times a day and they love to give the milk because if they would not give their milk, they would be a little uncomfortable. Their udders would be really full and tight and it would actually kind of be a little painful for them. So they love to give milk. It does not hurt them. And as you can see, they are very relaxed. They're just kind of doing their thing and they are ready to go back out to their stall and their free stall area. Awesome. So we're getting quite a few questions on how many gallons of milk do they produce in a day? And I know you have a cool visual for us. I do. So cows, the weight is given in pounds but we don't drink pounds of milk. We drink gallons of milk. So our cows right now give about 90 pounds of milk every day. So that's one cow. 90 pounds is about 10 gallons of milk. So let's just count these together. I know some of my friends, you are good counters. So count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, that's 10 gallons in one day a cow produces. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. And we it did is crazy. A couple of questions, you know, why is milk so good for you? Well, milk is so good for us because it is a nutrient powerhouse. It is loaded with nine essential nutrients. And I know right now my video friend is showing one of my favorite posters. It has the nine different nutrients that milk has. So it doesn't matter if you have whole milk, 2%, 1% skim, they all have the nine essential nutrients. And some of those that are probably really familiar to you, it has calcium, for our bones and our teeth, gives us strong muscles. But the other one that's really important that a lot of other things do not give us is protein that helps our muscles. So as you can see, a lot of the big names there, the phosphorus, potassium, vitamin D, they, it is loaded with so much goodness. Awesome. You did a phenomenal job, Stacey. And we had so many of our questions answered just in the tour you gave. I know we are at 1.30, so if folks need to jump off and move on to another part of their school day, feel free to do that. But Stacey's actually going to stay with us another 15 minutes because we have so many great questions that we're going to try to answer. Um, so with that, we did get a question, Stacey, on um, why is the cow and calf separated? That is a really good question. One of the main reasons why we do that, Emma, is to keep the calf healthy and safe. Number one, a big cow is really large and heavy. Does anybody remember how much it weighs? Do you remember from earlier? I said it was 1,500 pounds. So even though the calf is big, if it were to get stepped on by the cow, it would be hurt. So that's the first reason. The other reason, we do keep them together in the beginning. The cow licks off the baby. I know that sounds kind of yucky, but that's how God made cows, that they have that instinct to lick them and to get them all cleaned up. But then soon after that, that is when we take the calf to be able to monitor it and to be able to make sure that it's getting everything that it needs. So we have it in the hutch by itself so it can't spread germs and get sick. If we think about everything that's going on right now with um, 
the coronavirus or the flu and colds. We don't want to share germs. So that is what we do with our calves. We have them in an individual hutch where they are able to build up their immune system in the first few months of their life. That's when they get the vaccinations that they need. That's when they get the colostrum that's rich in antibodies. So it is so important that we give them a great start to their life. So they are getting everything they need. The other reason why it's important, you asked me about math being important, it's important that they get the right amount of feed and milk. So as farmers, we're able to monitor and make sure each animal is getting exactly what it needs. Awesome. We actually had a question. How do they go from the parlor to the cow barn? And I think you're in the perfect place to show us that. <laughs> We sure are. So this over here is the freestall barn. And if you see, there's a little walkway there. So they get some exercise throughout their day. I don't know if you can see that okay, but that is a little walkway where they go over and walk to the holding area in the parlor where they wait to come into the parlor to be milked. Awesome. And then of course, when they leave, they walk back through there to their group. Um, and we did have a question. Um, do you have any bulls on the farm? We do not. We have only girls. Um, one of the reasons, just for safety reasons, bulls can sometimes be a little ornery. They can get a little mean. So to keep our animals safe and to keep our workers safe and our family safe, we do not have bulls on our farm. Awesome. And a really great question. Uh, where does the milk go between the cow and the store? Very good question. If we turn around here, we can actually see this is a big bulk milk tank. And this milk tank on our farm, it holds 6,400 gallons of milk. Our milk truck driver comes every other day and he comes and he takes the milk from the tank and he puts it in his tanker truck by this big hose that they hook up. And the milk truck is also cool. So this has something that it refrigerates it and it keeps it at a good temperature. It's actually 37 degrees Fahrenheit. And then when the milk truck comes to pick it up, his tanker truck is also something that keeps it cool and at the right temperature. And he then takes it to a processing plant where they go through a lot of different tests to make sure that the milk is wholesome and ready for consumers to be able to get at the store. It goes through, I'm gonna give you two big words that you can um, think about. It goes through two processes. The one is called pasteurization. And that is the process when the heat is heated up, the milk is heated up and then cooled down to get rid of any germs and bacteria that could possibly be growing. And then the other process that it goes through is homogenization. And that just means it gets a nice smooth um, consistency because right now, if I were to get milk out of this tank, the cream, the fat would come to the top and I would need to shake the container to mix it all together. So that also happens at the processing center. Awesome. We had a question come in. How many team members do you have on the farm? That is a great question. We are a family of five. So it's my husband and myself, and we have three children. And we are also blessed with a great team of employees as well. So it's a lot of teamwork that goes on here. We have three full-time employees, and then we have two part-time employees. So it does, it takes a team of people to work together. Not only do we have those employees, but we have a lot of other people that we work with to give the best care to our cows. I talked about the nutritionist. That's an important team member. We have the vet. He is very important to our herd. We have someone that comes to do pedicures, to trim their hooves. So we have a lot of people that come to our farm to help us give the best care to our cows. Awesome. I know you mentioned you work with a vet. We had a question come in, do cows ever get sick and how do you take care of them? Oh, that is a really good question. Just like you and I sometimes get under the weather and we're not feeling well, 
calves and cows also sometimes get sick. So many times it's things that we can do to give them some things to help them feel better. But sometimes if they're really sick, just like we may have to go to the doctor, we actually have a vet that comes here to the farm and he can check them out and help us to figure out how we can best get them back to good health. Awesome. We had a question. How is chocolate and strawberry milk made? Oh, great question. Well, all cows, every single breed of cows, they all give us white milk. I know some people might think you need a chocolate cow to get a chocolate milk. However, you just take white milk and then you need to add your flavoring to it. So since I'm close to Hershey, we love Hershey syrup. We put syrup in and we stir it, or if you like strawberry. So all cows give white milk. Awesome. And we had a question on what does the hair feel like on a cow? Oh, that's a really good question. Sometimes hair feels like a little coarse. It's a little shorter than ours. So it's not like as soft as ours, but it is comparable. If you have a dog or another animal, I would say it's very comparable to petting a dog and the way their fur feels. Awesome. And another question came in, how long do cows live? That's another great question. Cows have a shorter lifespan than we do as humans. On average, I would say they live about six to 10 years. Awesome. These are some good questions. We also had a, a fun one come in. Do cows ever jump? You know what, Emma? They do sometimes jump, especially when we're getting a group of cows and there's free area, not many other things around. Sometimes they might jump a little bit and almost gallop like a deer. So they do sometimes jump. Awesome. And we had a couple of questions on, do they ever get to go outside? At our farm, they are very content. There are some farms that have pastures that cows are able to go outside. But here at our farm, they actually stay in the barn and they actually enjoy being in the barn because it's the right temperature. They have everything they need with their food, their water, a place to lie down. So they actually prefer to be in a protected area like the freestyle barn. Awesome. And this will be a fun question for you to answer. Someone asked, do they ever get baths? You know what, Emma? We talked earlier about if some of our animals have names. So do you remember some of the names I said? We have Pepperoni, Pink, Beauty, Belle. Those special show animals, they're kind of like the little queens or the princesses on the farm because they get special treatment. They do get a special bath. We wash them and we have special things that we do to get them all ready to show at our county fair. But the rest of the herd, they stay pretty clean in their area because of cleaning down their stalls and making sure um, other areas are cleaned up. So they do stay fairly clean on the farm. Awesome. And for our last question of the day, um, we had a question on how tall are they? Are they taller than you? Well, it depends. Um, I'm about 5'4", so when I would stand, I would say a cow's head is right in line with me, especially I know from showing animals, they would be right with me. However, if they would stand on their hind legs and stand up tall, they would definitely be taller than me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Stacy, for sharing your farm with us today. You did an excellent job throughout your tour, making sure all of our questions got answered. If you have additional questions, feel free to send those to American Dairy Association Northeast. Your teachers know how to reach me and we can get those answers or drop them in on the Facebook live feed and we'll get those answered for you. Um, this tour has been recorded. You'll receive a link to the YouTube recording and it's available on Facebook right after this tour. Thank you so much everyone for joining us today. For those of you tuning in on Zoom, Please fill out our survey so that we can make sure we're bringing you the best learning experience possible. And I'm going to let Stacy end our tour today with any last words for this group. 
Well, I just want to thank all of you for taking time out of your day to come join me at Talview Dairy. I just want to give a special shout out to all the workers. You see me and you see Emma, but there are so many other people that are doing an awesome job to get these videos and this special tour to you. So make sure um, your teachers thank the American Dairy Association for putting this together and all their workers. And I also just want to end with make sure you get your three servings of dairy, one, two, three, every single day to have a healthy and strong body. So thanks again for coming, everyone. Drink thanks. milk. Thanks, everyone. We hope to see you on our next virtual farm tour in the spring semester.